Hello everybody, welcome to Real and Virtual Outdoors. On today's episode, we're going to do a jig tying episode. I'm going to tie up a couple crappie jigs today. We're going to use, uh, talk about some supplies we're going to use, and how you can incorporate some of these uh, same supplies and maybe, uh, I use some jigs if you're a beginner. I'm not a beginner. I have 30 years of tying experience. I have some disabilities that has prevented me from using a vice so. or uh, maybe a uh, supplies that somebody else would use. 30 years ago I learned to tie jigs kind of on the budget, catch a lot of fish on them, just been doing it the same way for the last 30 years. It's a little differently than what you may see on other YouTube videos, but the outcome is the same. It makes a nice jig, puts fish on the dock. Uh, and that's always the goal. So we're going to start out with a 1 16th ounce white jig head. This is just a Bass Pro Shops. Jig head with a light wire hook. Uh, tail fabric, or the tail uh, portion of this is uh, number 95 white paracord. Uh, buy this at Hobby Lobby. Any craft store has it. And uh, we're going to fray this out at the end of the video and it's going to make a nice tail. We put that on the jig head like so and clamp it down. Pick up the thread bobbin here. We're just going to make a couple of loose wraps to begin. Kind of get it started. Uh, trim off the tag in. Couple more wraps. I like to be generous with the thread on, put the tail on it, kind of keeps everything together. The thread that I'm using is just a white quilting thread. Unless I'm doing uh, thread necks, it's all I ever use is white, and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, okay, so we got that trimmed off. And uh, we've got a tail there, and that's where I'm going to make my knot. I know a lot of people use a whip finish. Wish I could use one. Uh, my hands just don't allow me to use whip finish. So, we're going to... Uh, I've tried it. It's never really worked out for me. So. I do what works for me.
So we're just gonna make a knot here. And if I wasn't trying to do this on camera, I'd already have it tied up. <laughs> Just a simple over the hand knot. I'm gonna pull that down real tight. I like to use this thicker thread because I like to pull on it. That's all there is to it. Uh, now some people say, "Well, come untie it." To my knowledge, I've never tied a jig that's ever come untied. One more. We're done. That's the knot. Simple and effective. Grab the tag end off. Your tail portion, it's on the jig. Let's put a body on it. I am not a, a speed jig tire. <clears throat> I try to do quality. Over quantity. And with my hands the way they are, I see the quality or quantity. You can't do both. Okay, so this is just a blue, and it may look purple on the camera, I don't know, but it's blue. It's a very nice blue. Uh, and all this is is a tinsel pipe cleaner. That's all it is. Buy these things by the hundreds at Walmart for a couple of bucks. I get four to five jigs out of one of these strands, or 12 inches long. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little bend in the end of this, just like that. This little wire in here is real strong once you get it wrapped up. This stuff is very cheap and extremely effective. So I'm just going to bend that over, like so. Kind of bend it around the jig head. Mash that wire down, pull it, I pull it tight. Nice and tight. And I'm gonna start twisting it. Just a couple of turns to get it going good. That's basically the way it's coming out right there. I'm just going to keep turning this on down the hook. I like to make a full body. Uh, what I mean by that is I like to go from the head to the end of the hook. And the reason I do that is, is because sometimes if you're catching a lot of fish, you might get a little slippage of the body because of the way it's made. So I like to make a full body jig. I wrap it all the way back. That pretty much prevents that from ever sliding down. Fact is pulled real tight too. Okay, so we got it. That's eighty percent done. Just gonna clip that off. A pair of cheap wire cutters, get it.
It's the first jig of the morning. I gotta tell you, sometimes it takes me, even though I've been doing this for years, it takes me a time, a jig or two in the morning to get going. Uh, my hands really don't get going good until I do one or two of these. Okay, so we just got a little piece here on the end and we just kind of push over, a little metal piece. Just kind of push it down in the body. Not a big deal, you never know what's there. Okay. So that's the, uh, that's the jig part there. So now we're going, we're going to fray this tail out. I'm just going to take these same steps and I'm going to kind of comb it. And this paracord just comes right loose. And you can see that tail buzzing up real nice. We're going to go all the way down. Now when that paracord gets wet in the water, it is very limber and it opens up, it kind of plumes out, it gives a great action. That is one hand-tied crappie jig with craft store supplies on a boat jig head. That jig probably cost me 10 cents to make. Uh, the paracord that that's made out of, you can buy it at the craft store, 50 to 100 feet of it. Now you've seen how much I use, about two inches. That'll just tell you how many jigs that'll tie. Uh, I mean, and that's one of my favorite colors, that blue, shiny, and white. And I'll tell you something about this tinsel. This particular one, this blue, after it gets used quite a bit, it'll start kind of, it's silver underneath the blue. And it'll kind of get a little silver in it as the blue fades off of the chenille. And I'm talking about years. Uh, I'm talking about 25, 30 fish down the road. But when that little silver starts coming through as this blue shine maybe fades off of, of it in spots, I think it's a better jig. I think that silver shining through on there makes it a better jig. But for a dime, you can't go wrong. Okay. Um, that's just my way of doing it. And uh, we're going to do a couple more of them. Uh, we do all kinds of colors. I'm going to make a couple more videos here on some different colored jigs. I hope you will consider subscribing to Real and Virtual Outdoors. If you have any questions that you'd uh, like to ask me about getting into jig tying or uh, how I do something uh, specific, uh, please contact me. Uh, through my about page, uh, my email address, and uh, I'll try to help you. Here's another one. black and white one that I did. That's just got a lead head on it. You don't need to paint heads all the time on these jig heads. Uh, Contact me through my about page. Give me a, uh, an email on my 
uh, email address. And I'll try to help you as much as I can. Here's another one. That's an orange and black. That's an effective color. I hope that helps you. Hope that uh, gives you some ideas about how to get started jig kind. I appreciate you watching my video. Please subscribe to Real and Virtual Outdoors. And if you like what you saw today, give me a thumbs up. Thank you.